connecting from the last video we learnt about the um, second order differential equation in its real root case and those real root case were, were the repeated real root cases so here we will talk about the complex root case which is the final possibility and in this we will again come up with the same formula based on the characteristic equation and this will give rise to two roots and in this case they are likely to be complex so this is the first root and this is the second root respectively with a plus and a minus sign so now we can delve deeper into these and see that what will be the result we already know that discriminant defines the um, form of the roots so in this case let us see definitely in this case the discriminant should be negative that is we would have complex roots and uh, further we can calculate the roots by using the quadratic formula r1 and r2 they are there so this is the formula and when we put the values it looks like this here we already know that this will be a negative value so we have taken minus 1 as a common factor and when we take it as a common factor it will allow us to have a square root on it as well because it was under root above it and then uh, th the square root of minus 1 is equal to aorta which is a Greek letter which is equal to the square root of a negative 1 and due to that this term will come out of the roots and uh, the root and this will be left here and then aorta will be carried as it is now we have a plus and a minus sign in between the two so uh, when we have a plus and when we have a minus it means that we are having two roots conjugate roots and instead of writing this we can write uh, h and instead of writing this we can write upsilon or v so therefore in place of h we have this and in place of v we have this here again the same symbols are used aorta is kept as it is so these are called as conjugate complex roots because these are uh, together because conjugates are basically two opposites written together just like plus minus they are written here this h is the real part and this is the complex part r1 and r2 are the two roots so this makes the roots uh, in a simpler form we can say that this is an imaginary part because the imaginary part and real part they combine to give the complex number and imaginary part has the uh, aorta uh, symbol in it so complex is equal to real and imaginary numbers together so after uh, developing this uh, uh, formula of the roots we have to have we have to uh, develop a formula of the complementary function here you can see it is so that is a5 and a6 then the roots are there as well first root and the second root and we know about the value first root and second root that we just developed in the last step and now we can write them in a uh, detailed way aorta is being uh, time is being multiplied in with the terms inside the parenthesis once it will appear with uh, ht and then the exponent will be of uh, v i t uh, or in greek language upsilon i t so this is a minus sign in between so it should be carried as it is and then we can take uh, exponent of ht as a common factor and will be left with this term so this is the form of the complementary function these are two uh, fun uh, the, the two roots and they are complex in nature so this is the formula of the complementary function in addition to this there is another formula uh, of the same complementary function and that is in terms of trigonometric ratios this is an alternative of it and uh, it will give us uh, the same uh, response in yc that is the complementary function it can be superior because we know that sine and cos sometimes when taken with uh, certain angles can give you values like 0 and 1 and um, once if we have such values in our expression of yc it is going to make things simple to solve 
this is something we will experience as we go ahead and solve some numerical example but before that we should also uh, remember uh, a certain diagram which is known as the Argent diagram and uh, definitely it is after the name of the individual who gave this idea and the idea is simple that when you have a complex number you make the real part on x-axis and the imaginary part on y-axis real part for example is equal to 1 and the imaginary part is equal to aorta in the negative domain real part will be minus 1 and the imaginary part would be minus aorta in certain situation uh, where the um, dimensions are z 1 0 and 0 1 and minus 1 0 and 0 minus 1 we have a circle that has a radius of 1 because no matter where you draw this line it is going to be of one unit so it becomes a unit circle this is why we call it a unit circle so this is in lines with the current situation where we are dealing with the complex number here we can uh, zoom in this uh, diagram on which x axis uh, and y axis they have been plotted with imaginary numbers and uh, x axis has real numbers and this is the point at which we are trying to calculate or draw the complex number c stands for complex number h is the x axis value and y is the y axis uh, v is the uh, y axis value so here you can see x uh, has a certain length at this point that is h and the y axis the vertical dimension is equal to v this height we can calculate the roots uh, we can calculate the hypotenuse and this hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sums uh, of uh, sum of the squares of the other two sides that is base and the perpendicular so this is the pythagorean theorem that we have been studying before theta is that angle that we can uh, consider here so a Pythagorean theorem can help us to find out the value of R that is the hypotenuse or the radius in this diagram so now let's solve this numerically we have been given another uh, second order differential equation here with the two initial conditions primarily of the initial uh, actual function and then of the uh, derivative of it that is the second initial condition uh, this is the standard form the comparison with which will give us the value of a1 and a2 and b b a2 and a1 so these are the values that we can use to find the nature of the roots by using this test which is based on the discriminant so uh, when we put these values we see that the answer is negative which is less than zero which signifies that we are dealing with the complex root case the roots can be found simply by using the same procedure that we have been doing before with the help of the quadratic formula this is r1 and this is r2 the two roots and within the two roots we can highlight the real part and the imaginary part and they are uh, written here the real part and the imaginary part this is the um, yc value the formula of that we have uh, substituted the values that is h and v or upsilon in greek language so putting these values we get this which is the general solution of the given second order differential equation with complex root uh, with complex roots now we um, put the value of the equilibrium that is yp and we get the time path um, which is still not definite because of the presence of a5 and a6 so we in, we introduce the first initial condition by putting the value of t as 0 here and here and here and here we will have the value equal to 0 of t so we solve it and when we solve it we get um, the value of a5 as 1 um, and I hope you can do this uh, step because this is something we have been doing before in the distinct real root case and the equal uh, real root case or the repeated real root case 
why not uh, the value of it is given that is 3 and we know that cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. We were talking about this convenience because uh, while using the exponents we might not be able to get the quick answer like this but in case of sin and cos the trigonometric ratios the answers are uh, very easy to find and we have straight away come up with the value of one of the arbitrary constants that is a5. So now for the sake of a6 we can calculate the derivative of yt uh, and that is calculated here. Um, it's a little lengthy but still you can do it because you have the knowledge of calculating derivatives. Here this is one function this is the other function that we need to differentiate. This function in addition is uh, going to be equal to 0 because this is just a constant. So the first function we call as gt the other function we call as ht and when we have two functions being multiplied we apply the product theorem of differentiation this is the derivative of the first function the other function as it is the derivative of the second function and the function sec uh, the first function as it is so this is the derivative of first function second as it is derivative of the second function and the first one as it is now the further things are the the uh, matter of solution derivative of it is in in uh, under in, under this line and um, this is the uh, same term carried as it is this is the derivative of this term and this term remains as it is further we can write it like this and this will remain as it is here the derivatives will be taken individually and these derivatives will help us to simplify the situation what we have done is that we have uh, chosen this negative sign and introduced it inside because this is being multiplied with this term so a5 and a6 will accept this negative sign and it will disappear from here and inside this bracket we are differentiating them uh, and these trigonometric ratios are being differentiated this minus 4 will appear here and this uh, 4 will appear here so we have just rearranged the values and after it uh, we are in a position to introduce t is equal to 0 in order to make it y bar naught so in the next step you will see that instead of t we will have 0 in all those places this is this one that one all of these are now 0 wherever we had t so this is given this is the uh, value uh, which is given in the data and it is e equal to 11 so um, after uh, putting t is equal to 0 we can solve this easily we know that cos 0 is 0 um, cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0 sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 so again the use of trigonometric ratios formula cos and sin uh, ratios formula is going to help us to simplify the things uh, with quite a bit of ease at this stage we have a5 and a6 in the equation a5 is already found and its value was 1 so we substitute its value and finally we got the value of a6 so now the values of a5 and a6 can be substituted in the general uh, solution and we will get the uh, definite solution 2 is the particular integral and yc is the uh, uh, other part of the time path and now it doesn't have any a's that is the arbitrary constant so we have the definite solution of the differential equation this one and this definite solution is equal to this and this had complex roots in it so in this way we can solve the uh, second order differential equation with its um, complex root case and we have completed all three cases that is distinct real root case and repeated real root case and in this video we did the complex root case now we can solve the second order differential equations with any of its possibilities that is all three of them thank you